we have another calculator to look at. This time we're bang up to date with an electronic calculator. Or at least we've made it as far as the 1970s anyway. This Adler 1214P was made in Japan in 1973, or thereabouts. It's a printing calculator with a 12-digit capacity and some reasonably advanced features for the time. I did find a price for this calculator in 1973, which was 1850 Deutschmarks. And if I've got the correct exchange rate for the time, that equates to £296. And if I put that into an inflation calculator, it gives us a whopping £2,599 in 2021. Not only is the price large, but the calculator itself is pretty large too. If I place a sheet of A4 paper on top, it doesn't entirely cover it, and it weighs in at just over 4 kilograms. Not so many years before this, people would largely be using mechanical calculators, like this Lagomasino machine, which technically can do everything that the Adler can do, only somewhat slower and with more keystrokes, and maybe a bit more thinking along the way. Electronic calculators had been around since the early 60s, but they weren't that common and they were extremely expensive. It wasn't until the 70s that they really began taking over from the old mechanical machines. Turn the machine on and you're greeted by a green power light and the whirring of the printer motor, which runs the whole time the machine is powered up. This is a very 70s thing to have a machine whirring away happily on your desk, and it's something I'm rather fond of. We'll take a look at what the machine does first of all, then later I'll remove the case to take a look at what's inside, although there's a bit less to see than on a mechanical calculator. Using the Adler is much the same as other adding machines, whereby to add 2 and 1 you have to enter 2 plus and 1 plus to add those two numbers into the register, before revealing the result by pressing the subtotal or total key. Other than that, addition and subtraction work as you'd expect. So if I do the fairly standard test of 123 plus 456 plus 789 plus 987 plus 654 plus 321, and not forgetting to press the final plus after the 321. Now I can press the subtotal key, and we should get the answer of 3330. And indeed we do. If I now enter 4544 and press the minus key to subtract it from the register, then press the total key, it will print the answer of 1214, in red, with an asterisk next to it to show that it's a total, and a minus because the answer is obviously a minus value. Multiplication and division are equally simple. If I enter 476 times 24 and press the total, we get the answer of 11424. Pressing the total key prints the answer and clears the register ready for the next calculation, whereas the subtotal leaves the number in the register ready for more additions or subtractions. However, there is a working register that still holds the last answer, so if I now press the divide key and enter 272 and press the total again, we're left with the answer of 42. The two sliders on the left set the amount of decimal places, the leftmost one setting the amount for entries, and the right one sets the amount you'll get when you press the total key. So if I set the left one to 8 and the right one to 3, and enter the usual 355 divided by 113, which will give us an approximation of pi, and then press the subtotal key, you'll see the result of 3.14159292. But if I press the total key, it prints to three decimal places of 3.141. You'll notice that it has simply cropped the number rather than doing any rounding. But if I press the 5.4 or rounding key and repeat the same calculation, this time we get the more expected answer of 3.142. The two sliders interlock, so you can't have more decimal places in the total result than you were working with in the first place, which kind of makes sense. 
If you leave both sliders at 2, the machine is set for financial calculations. By default you'll still have to enter the decimal point, but if I press the AM button it works like an adding machine or cash register and I can simply enter the relevant digits without using the decimal point. So we'll go for £12.99 and £99.99 and £10.47 and £99 and £99 and £99 to give us the total of £123.45. You've probably already noticed the paper feed key here. That does exactly what you'd expect it to do. The number key allows you to enter a reference number that won't be added into the register. It prints the hash next to the number to remind you that it's not part of your calculations when you check your printout later on. The change sign key allows you to do things like multiplying by a minus number. So if I'm working on some figures, I'll go for 1997 plus 2003 plus 800 plus 529 minus and press the subtotal or total key. I can now press the times key followed by my multiplier I'll go for 7 and press the change sign key followed by the equals and it will multiply by minus 7 giving the answer of minus 29897. We'll see more uses for the change sign key later on. Next is the constant key. This allows us to enter a number that we're going to use for repeated calculations. Say I'm calculating the circumference of several different circles. I can enter pi, 3.142 will do for this, and press the K key. It latches down and displays the red light to show it's in operation. Now I can enter the first diameter, we'll go for 3 and press the times key, and it will print the answer. I can then enter 3.25 and press times, then 3.5 and press times, and 3.75 and press times, and finally 4 and press the times key. And we get our results neatly printed out of 9.426, 10.212, 10.997, and 12.568. Releasing the K key removes the constant and allows us to carry on using the calculator as normal. The percentage key works in a rather nice way. Say I've got an item priced at £65.99 excluding 20% tax and I want to show how much the tax is and what the final cost will be. Then all I have to do is enter the 65.99 times 20 percent and it will automatically print the X tax price, the percentage, the amount of tax and the grand total of £79.19. Or if I have an item priced at £49.99 and I want to offer a 25% discount I can enter the 49.99 times 25 then the change sign key so it will subtract the percentage and press the percent key and we see the original price, the percentage showing as a minus, the actual amount of the discount and the final price of £37.49. This is a really useful way of presenting percentages for financial work. We can also use the percent key to calculate what percentage one number is in relation to another. Say your annual turnover is £47,000 and you want to know what percentage came from your biggest customer who spent £14,391. So if we enter the 14391 and press the divide key, then enter the turnover of £47,000 and press the percent key. We can see that 30.62% of our turnover came from that one customer. The EX key allows you to exchange the dividend and the divisor. So let's say I want to divide 129276 by 7.3 plus 15.9 plus 27.5 plus 25.3. Obviously I could just add up the bottom line and make a note of that amount, then enter the dividend followed by the divisor that I'd just calculated. But no, I think we can do better than that. So if I enter my 7.3 plus 15.9 plus 27.5 plus and 25.3 and not forgetting the final plus. Then press the subtotal or total to display our divisor. 
and now I can press the division key and enter my 129276, followed by the exchange key, which will swap the dividend and the divisor. And finally press the total key to reveal the answer of 1701. The A button automatically adds any totals into the memory. It will also add any totals when using a constant for multiplication or division directly into the memory too. So, let's say I want to convert my fuel purchases from litres to gallons and then calculate my average fuel consumption over a set period. First I'll enter 4.546 and press the K key. That'll do the conversion from litres to gallons. Then press the A key. And now I'm ready to enter each fuel purchase followed by the division key. So, 51.15 divide, 60.23 divide, 25.98 divide, 13.29 divide, and 43.75 divide. Now I can press the memory subtotal key to display the total gallons of 42.763. Then release the K and A keys, enter the mileage of 2035 miles, press the divide key and press the memory subtotal key to recall the divisor, followed by the total key, to show our fuel consumption of 47.588 miles per gallon. You'll notice that the orange light glows when there's something in the memory. Pressing the memory total key will print whatever is in the memory and clear it back to zero. You can also add to the memory or subtract from it using the memory plus or memory minus buttons which is pretty standard on any calculator with a memory. The C key just clears the keyboard without adding anything into the register if you've made a mistake. If you exceed the maximum capacity of the machine it will print a load of arrows to indicate an overflow. So I'll enter 9876543211 times 123 and press the total key. And there's our arrows. And you have to press the total key again to free the machine up before you can carry on. The same also happens if I try to divide by zero. So if I enter 1 divided by 0 and press total, and there's the arrows again. You do end up with huge paper trail printouts as you work on one of these machines. Brilliant for going back over your work to check it, and kind of cool and retro too. Anyway, I'll pop the covers off so we can take a peek inside. The printer on this calculator, and many others like it, uses a revolving drum with the characters raised up. You can see the row of overflow arrows here. The paper sits in front of the revolving drum, with the ribbon in front of the paper, and these little hammers in front of that. When it's time to print, the appropriate hammer will press the ribbon against the paper and the raised characters of the drum, and the ink will transfer onto the paper. I've never taken one of these apart, but there must be a pretty sophisticated system to sync the hammers to the correct characters on the drum. The advantage of this system is that the characters stay clean, unlike the hammers on a typewriter which need periodical cleaning. Looking at the underside, we've got the main circuit board here, which is quite sparse compared to modern electronics. There's a couple of edge connectors on the board here, and then at the back we've got the metal chassis housing the power supply and printer assembly. I'll pop the circuit board out so we can take a peek at the other side. OK, here's the other side of the main board, populated with Hitachi chips. I'll put some higher res photos on screen in a moment. And you've got the underside of the keyboard circuit board down here. Right, as promised, here's a shot of the underside of the main board. You can always freeze the video if you need to examine it in more detail. And here's the flip side, showing the entire board. And a slightly closer shot of just the chips. Last but not least, I wonder if that's a date code on the edge connector. It would certainly tie up with the 1973 year I've got listed for this machine. OK, I think that will probably do for this video. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. There'll be more vintage calculator content, along with some other stuff coming soon. That's it for now. 
So thanks for watching and I'll see you in a future video.